Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Alright, this time round we're going to be doing another 3D print and paint review. This time of another Star Wars model. And I've gone for Mara Jade here. Now, Mara Jade is a character that was popular in Expanded Universe. I'm a big fan of the Expanded Universe. I got pretty much nearly all the books that were ever written at that point. Uh, so I was kind of annoyed when Disney decided to get rid of them. But hey, we may turn it into Legends, but never mind. Now... This model, uh, what I've actually done, I've obviously put together the majority of it, uh, just to make it easier for the painting really. The bits I've left off is again, thinking around the painting. So the model has a cloak. It's gonna be a lot easier to paint the cloak separately than attach it onto the model. She has a pair of goggles that go around the neck and a blaster that goes on the thigh. And again, just for painting reasons, easier to keep them separate. The head itself, and the, the hair is split into two parts that obviously go around the top of the head. And again, I can't put attach the head onto the neck until the cloak and the goggles have gone around the neck. So again, I have to consider the order of, of things there. And I can't attach the hair to the head because the hair itself, actually the groove goes around the neck. So the head has to be plonked on and then the hair built around it. So what I have done is I've just printed off a one piece miniature version of the model to give you an idea of what it looked like when it's all finished. Uh, I just quickly painted it, um, dry brushed and a few inks just to make it a bit more interesting looking. But this is quite helpful to do as it gives me an idea of, of how to sort of paint it and how to plan out the build of it what i'm not what i am going to do differently this this was the base that the model comes with the designer um wrote on that he envisioned <coughs> the character being dressed up as an imperial guard and then sort of whipping off the outfit um so that that's that's not really for me so what i'm going to do is um i've already printed off just a circular base from a different model that i've, I've had in the past just resized it so I'm not going to do that base it's just going to be a plain base but everything else is pretty much going to be spot on I haven't actually printed out the lightsaber blade yet uh, so I can I can do that at a later stage but that's what it's going to look like when it's finished but obviously a lot bigger and obviously it's going to be full painted I'm probably not going to show too much of the painting this time round um, to be honest it's it can be a bit of a pain to sort of do the videoing of it so, and I think most people probably understand who watch these videos, kind of my sort of process for that. I might dip in and out and just um, give a couple of hints and tips here and there for anyone looking to do a similar model to this, or in fact this model. And the link to this file uh, will be in the description and I recommend having a look at this artist's work. So here are a couple of pieces that I've now finished painting that I kept separate for ease of that. So here's the blaster in the holster. I've also done the goggles. Went with grey and leather effect. A couple of highlights of gold and silver. I blacked out the lenses and I've also done the cape. I decided to go with the green. Uh, I've done some light dry brushing around the edges to uh, sorry, around the folds to sort of pick those details out. And I've done some uh, edge highlighting, just in a slightly sharper, lighter green. And I've gone with gold for the uh, brooch there on the clasp. So for the base, I've decided that I'm not going to go with the uh, square one that I showed you earlier that comes with the statue. So instead what I've done is I've printed out um, just one from another statue that I worked on and I've resized it slightly so it fits with this character. Now obviously the original base has these uh, pin uh, holes, I should say, uh, for the pegs. That's not going to work with this one so what I'm going to have to do is obviously fill those in. But before I do that, what I've done is I've drilled a little hole, uh, marked out where I want the feet to go, and I've super glued in a uh, cut piece of metal. I just used um, brass paper clip. And I've then obviously put the holes in the bottom of the feet as well of the model. So in theory, I should just be able to plonk her down uh, when I need to. 
So what I need to do before I do that is obviously fill in these couple of holes. For that, I'm just gonna use some quick dry and poly filler and then sand it down. And there are the holes filled in and sand it down smooth. So next, all I'm gonna do is a couple of coats of Chaos Black over the whole thing and then a coat of clear sealer, uh, I'm gonna do satin. And here it is after the primer and the coats or varnish. It's not perfect, but it'll do at the end of the day. The only last step to do is to tidy up the bottom of the base. And for that, I've cut out a piece of felt, which is um, sticky back, and I'm just gonna pop that on the bottom. So here's the progress I've made before I do the final assembly. I've got all the pieces now individually painted up. I went through most of them before, but now I have finished the face. It's not the greatest job in the world, but it'll do. As long as the eyes are facing in the right direction, you're generally, generally there. I've also done the hair, um, fairly straightforward, just a combination of red swashes and a little bit of highlights of orange. Now, as for the main body, I went for black and blue. Um, I lo looked at kind of reference pictures of, of Mara Jade on, that there is online. There's not a lot out there, um, obviously being an expanded universe character, uh, but I think she's come out okay. I haven't glued her to the base. I'm, I'm still not convinced by this base. Um, so in the future, I, I want the option to be able to change it and come up with something else. Uh, so yeah, it, it works temporarily, um, you know, it's fine, but yes, I, I might look to change that. I struggled a little bit with the skin tones. I've never really done skin tones on, on this scale before. Um, so there was a lot of backwards and forwards going on that, but I just, it, it'll do. <laughs> okay, right, so going to be a bit of a, a trick to this, I think. Obviously the cape's got to go on first, that's going to go round, glue into the neck joint. Then I'm going to have to attach the goggles. Then the head and the hair all kind of has to be done at the same time because the head has to obviously go around uh, the slot there, but then the hair pieces actually slot round the top of the neck as well. So it's going to be a bit of jiggery pokery to get all this going. Um, and then obviously uh, the hole still be the easy thing to glue into place. Okay, let's see how that goes. So after gluing the head on, I've had a bit of a disaster. Now the the actual cloak clasp snapped here. Um, let me just move that goggle around. Uh, yeah, you can you can see it's actually snapped across there. So I had to hastily re-glue it, which has obviously taken off a load of the paint um, and kind of got glue splodges everywhere. So it's not ideal. Um, the other, but the major problem I've got as well, which I knew I was going to have to deal with at some point, is this next seam. This is the problem with the sculpting of the model. Because of where they put that, that line, you've got this very ugly seam, and, and I'm going to have to try and attempt to fill that now, I think, before I put the hair pieces on and see what can be done about it. You see, I don't know why it was sculpted this way, because the obvious place to have put the actual piece was the, was the neck because that would have made the construction a hell of a lot easier because you would have been able to put the hair on in one go and slot the entire head and neck piece down into the model. So I think this might be an example of a, a sculptor who isn't a painter or modeler necessarily, um, which is a shame. But I'm going to, I'll try and stick in a bit of um, uncured 3D resin in that gap, cure it with a UV light and try and blend it in. But it's not gonna be pretty, I don't think. Yeah, I'm not sure I've made much of a difference with it, to be honest. I filled it in, as I say, with resin. Uh, gone over it again, obviously painted it, but the lip is just too big. Um, I know I'm a bit perfectionist, but 
Ugh, never mind. It doesn't look so bad. Perhaps if I turn it that angle, that's the way to go. Oh well, I've done as best as I can. I'm going to put the hair on and probably deal with more seams through that. Okay, so the hair is on and you guessed it. There is going to be a big old seam at the back. Luckily, it's not so bad at the front. Get into focus. Um, yeah, just a little bit there. So I'll try and fill that, and hopefully that'll be a bit easier than we had with the neck. So after a bit of gap filling and a bit of repainting, that's what I'm left with. It's not perfect, but it's livable. And at the end of the day, it's on the back. As long as the front looks okay, which is the main thing. Okay, well with that, I think I'm going to call it done. Now, I haven't actually done the lightsaber. So, it does come with a lightsaber blade, uh, which is not optional, obviously, extension that would come out here. But, um, two, two things really. One, it takes up quite a bit of space. Um, if you put the lightsaber blade out as well, you'll obviously find a much bigger space to put it. The lightsaber blade also, I don't really know a good idea of how to paint this unless I'm hoping someone might have some options on how to sort of paint it to try and make it look like a lightsaber, uh, even though it's just plastic. I know you've got some clever luminous paints these days, so I might have to look to see if there's something like that, some sort of sparkling blue or something that I can find, um, just, just in case for the future. Okay, now let me tidy everything away and I'll get it into a more presentable form and I'll give you my final thoughts. So here she is as the finished model, or at least as finished as I'm getting it at this stage anyway. As I say, I haven't put on the lightsaber blade and at some point I might change the base. So overall, uh, my thoughts on the model, I'll be honest, I'm still a little bit salty about how the construction is around the neck. Um, to be honest, I mean, when it's on a shelf, you, you're not really gonna notice that, but I just think the added complexities were unnecessary, really, um, which is a shame, because overall, the, the sculpt is pretty good. I mean, proportions-wise of the model are pretty good, um, height-wise and everything. I, I think the, the, the portrait is pretty good it's, it's pretty spot on um i say spot on i mean it's, it's a character we don't obviously it's from the expanded universe but she's always been portrayed as quite a stern sort of hard hard-faced character which i think um that that has uh, been accurately reflected in um the one of the negatives i would say again is if you do go with the option with the cape um you cover up pretty much all of the detail from the back this kind of uh, robot looking thing on her back is completely um, obscured so you're not um, yeah you're not getting the full benefit of the, of the details there but things like the gun are very nicely done um, and I'll say o overall that the lightsaber is, qu is quite well sculpted uh, it's yeah it's, it's a nice model as I was building and painting this model, it was a good excuse to dig out my Mara Jade comic books from 1998. Now, the cover is obviously where the the inspiration came from. Um, I think there, there were a couple of images that kind of, kind of came out and about at the time of what Mara Jade would look like, and they were all kind of based on this image. The funny thing is, when you actually read the comic, she, she never once um, wears that kind of outfit. She has several outfits throughout the, the series. Um, constantly changing in fact but never once has this this outfit that everyone seems to think is what she always wears at all times um, so what I kind of did with that because if you copied that and then it would just all be black um, which I thought would be a bit dull so hence why I went with um, added bits of gold I went for blue uh, for the inserts and, and I put obviously a green green cape for the way to go um, but yeah, I mean, if if you do use that as as the as the base um, guide kind of thing, then yeah, the costume has been sculpted pretty accurately, even even down to those goggles. So I'll leave a link uh, to where I downloaded the statue from, so you can go check out sculptor's work. He has done a number of models. Um, I would be interested in look, taking a look at a couple of others in the future, and. Um, 
yeah, let's just hope that with future releases, um, hopefully, li little gripes, as I say, about how the construction of the model goes together uh, can be improved, just, just to help the, the painters out there with these models. Okay, take care, everyone, and I'll see you in the next one.